Good morning, Basil Creek, and welcome to another worship experience with God's beloved and God's presence. Lord, you have been our dwelling place for generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let your work be manifest in your servants and may your glorious power shine through us. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us and may God prosper us for the work of our hands. Pray with me. Everlasting God, you are the beginning, the end, and everything in between. You love us as your children in spite of our imperfection. Come now to offer you this worship, Lord, trusting that you will receive it as a faithful expression of our devotion to you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We honor you today and every day. O oh Lord, amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul rejoice, take joy, my King.
Good morning. Our scripture for today will be coming from the book of John, 11th chapter, 38 through 44 verses. Again, John, 11th chapter, 38 through 44 verses. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, but Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Unless, would you please join me as we go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today to say thank you, Father, for being our Father, for you have been with us since our conception in the womb. You have taken care of us and provided us with our needs. And for that, Father, I say thank you. Even though we have not been the children that you planned for us to be, we've gone astray, but Lord, you still called us back and accepted us as your own. Each day you fill our day with mercy, mercy that we don't deserve, but because of your love for us, you are faithful in your daily giving of our daily bread and our mercy. You shine your light of love upon us to guide us through the pathway to do your will. Strengthen us as we are on our journey and help us to do what thou would have us to do. Father, I confess that I have not been the best child. I have not done all that you asked me to do. But I ask for your strength to go on and to do my very best so that at the end I shall see your face. God, we are in critical times. As I look to tomorrow, the day that our children will enter schools, with their friends. Father, I just ask, ask for your grace, your mercy. Please wrap our children around your arms and just hold them, Father, and protect them from each other. 
Bless the teachers, the principals, the assistant principals, all the staff members, Lord, the bus drivers, cafeteria workers, for they are standing on the front line with open arms and love in their heart. And we just pray that each and every day that our children leaves home safely and come back to us safely, Father. Let the, your will be done. And Father, guide us and help us embrace what must be done. For those students who are still in virtual academy, we ask that their learning is not interrupted and they continue to grow. Father, we are lost seeking your advice through this election time. For we don't know what the end is going to be, but we know you know, Father, because you know all things and everything is in your will. Take control of us this election, COVID-19. And Father, just protect us as we try our best to do what is right. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came down through 42 generations to save a wretch like us. Teach us, strengthen us to obey your will. And thank you for the blood that Jesus shed on the cross so that each of us will have a right to the tree of life. Eternal life is our goal. And eternal life is what you have prepared for us. Even when we sin and fallen off the trail, you didn't leave us. You came and rescued us. And I know that you will continue to do what you see that we need. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, Father, I ask you to, to protect us and guide us. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Goodness 
Let's give God a sacrifice of praise this morning. We might be few in the house, but there are many who are joining us on different platforms, on the conference call and out there in virtual land. I pray God's blessing for you all. I pray God's prosperity and protection and provision for you. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad therein. There is a word for the house this morning, and you've heard the scripture. I'm going to just reread John 11, verse 44. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said to them loose him and let him go today's sermon topic is Lazarus come forth Come on, say that with me. Lazarus, come forth. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this preaching and teaching moment. We ask, God, that you will allow your word to go forth, God, to be like seeds deposited in the fertile soil of every hearer's heart. That your word would generate a harvest, God. To bring forth your will, your way, and your work. God, right now, we open our hearts and our minds to you, Lord. We ask for clarity of thought, God, that only the Holy Spirit can bring. I ask that I might decrease, that you might increase, God. Holy Spirit, do what it is that only you can do in this moment. 
in every moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister Patricia, life is not fair. Life can be hard. But we know that our faith shields us from the deluge of threats and disappointments. Even today, 20% of all of the COVID deaths in the United States are people of color. We're facing great economic hardships, trying to figure out how we're going to manage our own health, daycare, virtual school, and still work a job. Is there anyone out there today who is trying to figure out life? Well, the greatest misconception, Chandra, is that Christian faith and belief in Jesus will guarantee earthly riches, iconic social status, and life free from hurt, harm, and danger. Sometimes it feels like the more we do right, the more things go wrong. Brian, am I, am I, am I alone in this? Has anyone in your faith walk? I know you've been saved 50, 11 years. I know you have prayed fire down from heaven. But has anyone ever had that moment where you were like, Jesus, do you see what's going on? Jesus, are you here? Do you care What's going on? This is where we find ourselves in the text in John 11. Some of Jesus' closest friends, they are having a major life-threatening dilemma. And their situation was time-sensitive. And Jesus, in his divine wisdom <laughs> and glory, purposely delayed Deacon Grace. <laughs> Verse 21, Martha confronts Jesus. And in verse 32, Mary also confronts Jesus. They say, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. A better translation of that, Deacon, is it is, if you had been here with us when we needed you, which you were not, my brother would not have died, which you let him. Verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. To the protest of Martha, she argued, Jesus, at this point, <laughs> he stinks. If I could use my exegetical imagination, <laughs> Jesus parlayed four days waiting until all medicinal, scientific, and religious hope of life for his dear friend, Lazarus, was lost. See, back in antiquity, they believed that the human spirit lingered close to the body for three days. And Jesus purposely waited an additional day to make sure that what was about to happen could not be explained by any human ingenuity, modern science, or any belief in faith or religious practice. It had to be strictly an act of God. I can imagine Martha and Mary's distress. These, this family, they supported Jesus' ministry. They put him up overnight. They fed him. They poured and sowed in his ministry. And when they needed him the most, Jesus was not there at the time of their brother's greatest life's challenge. I can imagine these sisters' grief. I can imagine the, the conversation that they had with Jesus, or maybe internally, maybe they didn't have this, have the audacity to speak it to his face, but they, they were probably thinking, first you let my brother die. How dare you? Now you wish to violate his memory and honor by excavating his decaying remains. Jesus, I trust you. I know that all of us are going to get up in the great wrecking of day, but what are you doing? Isn't it not bad enough that we are sitting at the sepulcher side of my brother's grave? 
sisters were angry, and rightfully so. You might not want to admit it, but I know there's some folks under the sound of my voice who have been angry with God, but knew better than to tell some about. The sisters were angry, but what they didn't recognize is that it's at the tomb, at the graveside, when all hope is lost, is where Jesus does his best work. Did you hear what I said? It's when the situation is not only bleak and grim, it's when it's impossible, when death thinks it is happening final say that Jesus does his best work is there anyone in here today who has been at the sepulcher side who has been right on the cusp of depression of destruction saying God I can't take any more if one more thing happens I wish I had one person in here who could relate to sister Mary and Martha's dilemma something we to understand about Jesus' mission in this text. He said, roll away the stone. He said, take it away. But like Martha, many of us have trouble inviting Jesus into the places that may stink in our lives. Uh-oh, y'all not going to put me out, all right? All right, we're about to go somewhere. I'll bring it home, but we're about to go somewhere. We have a, 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 a problem inviting Jesus into the places of our lives that we don't want anyone to know about. Now, it's all right the way we show up at work. It's all right the way we show up at the family reunion. It's all right the way we show up in church. But there are places and things and thoughts in your life where we haven't invited Jesus to roll away the stone. See, Martha was not only arguing to Jesus that that it was uh, biologically impossible. She wasn't only arguing to Jesus that that this was embarrassing. What she was literally saying is, why do you want this intimate connection with us? He is the most in the most vulnerable human state right now. His life has left his body and everything rotten will be exposed. Let me give you some advice here, baby. Your relationship with Jesus might only exist on Sunday morning from a 11 to 1. It might only resist, uh, exist when you're on, on the prayer line and having Bible study, but Jesus already knows what's behind your stone, so why not give him access? Truth is that we are ashamed of what is behind that stone. It does stink. It has a stitch. There's no life in it. But I want to encourage you today that salvation and relationship with Jesus doesn't only exist in this building. It doesn't only exist in your prayer closet. It follows you all through the week, all through the month, and all through your life. Salvation is holistic. Mind, body, and soul. Give God access behind your stone. Give God access to those thoughts and that speech and your finances and relationships and your hidden agendas and ambitions, your addictions and secret desires. For he already knows what's behind your stone. You don't think Jesus, the living Christ, knew what biological state of decomposition Lazarus was in? He knows but like the perfect divine gentleman, he waits for access. Now, some of us are still going to resist giving Jesus access. And that's when Jesus has to work behind the supernatural scene and be working on your behalf when you are colluding with the enemy for your own destruction. That's when Jesus has to step behind the veil and says, no, 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 baby. Let me let me close this door because she don't know what she's walking into. Let me close and stop this opportunity because it's going to lead to her destruction. Let me stop this thing right now because he doesn't know that this will end him up in the grave. That's when Jesus has to work behind the scenes. But Jesus wants to lead and be the captain of your soul. He wants to order your footsteps. And when we give him 100% access to who we are, then Jesus can do his greatest work. Even if you are at a place in your life where you feel like it's dead and there's no life in it and it cannot be resurrected. Do you know God is not confined by time? He's not confined by your finite understanding of workings. He's not confined by any resources. God is able to step into any situation, especially dead stinking ones and clean them up and make them new I wish I had 
Wish I had a few people in here who understood. So don't let your fear and guilt and shame stop you from giving Jesus access, not only to the tomb, but behind the wall of the tomb where he can do his best work in your life. I like 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that says, my grace is enough. My grace is sufficient for my strength. My strength, meaning God's strength, is made perfect in your weakness. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me modify that. God's strength through grace is made perfect in your dead, stinking situation. You might as well give him access. Because in your weakness, God's grace is manifested and made strong. God is waiting on you to give him total access. Won't you open the doors of your heart? Won't you roll away the stone of your mind and let Jesus step into that situation and breathe the breath of life back into it? You know, Marcy, is something I found interesting about this text. In verse 44, it says, even as after Lazarus was resurrected... He was still bound. You mean to tell me we traveled all the way to this town and you witnessed this miracle. First, I had to fight with you when I got to the house because you was mad that I parlayed. Next, I had to beg you to give me total access into the rotten parts. And now Lazarus is still bound, hopping out of the grave, hand and foot bound, face covered. What does that mean to us? That means even after you have relationship with Jesus Christ, there is still some things in your life you need to be set free from. I wish I had two people in this house who are ready to let go of their grave clothes and let go of those things that are obscuring your vision so you can see yourself how your master sees you it's time for the unveiling you have been in relationship with Jesus so long and now you're waiting on your time I'm here to tell you today on October the 25th 2020 that God is about to unwrap you God about to expose you to the world but first he has to clean you up baby you cannot be ashamed about where you grew up you cannot be ashamed about your family lineage because now is the time of unveiling and unwrapping and even as we are speaking in this place God is literally taking some grave clothes off of you I know you might have been mistreated I know you have missed some opportunities but I'm unwrapping you baby and I'm about to show the glory of God on your life you ought to step out of them grave clothes your social location does not dictate the greatness that God has in you the things that have been hindering you in life cannot determine your outcome That addiction you're struggling with cannot stop the glory of the Lord on your life. Because when God reveals, it's not just for your own glory. It's for God's glory. God literally wants to show all of the spectators, all of the haters that said you weren't going to make it, all of the people that thought when they walked away from you, you were going to crumble. God wants to show the rest of the world, if I can bring her out of the tomb, if I can unwrap him, I can unwrap you too. I wish I had two people. Just two. I don't need a lot. Just two. And Hebrews 12 and 1 says... Shed that weight and every sin that is stopping you from moving. You know, I used to run marathons. I know I don't look like it today, but back in the day, I used to run marathons, Jeanette. And, and, and by you get like maybe halfway through, stuff starts to irritate you. You know, you come with all your water bottles and, and your headphones and stuff like that, but all of that friction starts to irritate you. And halfway through the race, I start taking stuff off. But like, I, can't, I can't travel. I got to let some stuff go because I got to be free. See, I got to finish the race. It wasn't just about the time clock. It was about finishing the race. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying in this Christian marathon that you're running, you got to let some stuff go. You got to let some unforgiveness go. You got to let some hatred go. You got to let some animosity go. Some vindictiveness go. Some gossiping go. And move into your destiny. Let it go. 
it's weighing you down. But the most intriguing thing I find about this text in my closing is that if you pay attention to the scriptures, there is usually like a hidden formula. If you don't get distracted by the details. See, I can imagine when Jesus said, roll that stone away. Probably one third of the crowd was like, yo, I don't want to see this. (laughs) I don't want to see no dead body come out of that stone. I'm out. But the two thirds that remained was like, "Eh, you know, I want to see what's about to happen. Uh, But when he said, let me into the stone, another one third (laughs) might have said, you know what? I don't want to smell and see what's behind that stone. I'm out. And then the remaining one third that got to witness Lazarus hopping out of that dead situation, that impossible situation, the righteous remnant that still want to stay there and see the blessings of God, the miracles of God manifested. The righteous remnant is the one who will see the blessing completed. What am I saying to you this morning? Look at us around here. We are the righteous remnant. COVID couldn't stop us. 45 couldn't stop us. Racism couldn't stop us. Hatred couldn't stop us. Brutality couldn't stop us. Nothing can stop us because we are the children. The righteous remnant. You ought to give yourself a pat on the back for being the righteous remnant that the trials and the struggles and the dis-ease of life could not stop you. But verse 41 through 43 says this. It says Jesus gave us a formula for when life wants to convince you that it's too far gone. It says he looked up. He literally put his eyes on the Father. So when your linear view is clouded or obstructed, look up. Put your eyes on the Father. Look toward the hills because that's where your help's coming from. Secondly, it said he gave thanks. Now, what kind of crazy person can give God thanks at the side of a tomb? What kind of ridiculousness, indignation is it for us to give God some praise at a funeral? What kind of ridiculousness is it to the world after God, after the medical community said it's dead? What kind of ridiculousness is it for us to say no? Death does not have the final say. It said he gave thanks. Is there anyone in here who can give God thanks even though you don't see the end? Even though you might be in the midst of your situation? even though you might have lost a couple of battles you know that the battle is not yours give God thanks said he believed what he was asking for he believed it that doesn't mean you have to have all imperial evidence that means you walk in faith and not by sight That means you know it's going to come to pass because your faith says so. And when you are aligned and in relationship with the master, you know that all things are working together for your good. He believed what he was asking for. Now this might be the next next part might be my favorite step in this formula. Are you following me? He he looked up. (laughs) He gave thanks. He believed it. Step number four in this formula at the side of the tomb. He commanded. He spoke to the dead thing by name. See, see, some of us, we just say, God, take it away. If you find anything in me that's not like you, that's a great prayer. But you know what you're struggling with. You ought to call that thing by name. Sometimes you ought to move into your your prophetic authority and be like, you know what? I'm going to speak to that thing that is plaguing me, that thing that is weighing me down. I'm going to call it by name. If you look at the scriptures, the way Jesus gained control over the demons was said, name yourself. And when they named himself, he was able to command them, go into that herd there and get out of this person here. When you name things, it gives you power over them command it Lazarus come forth literally the word the name Lazarus means God's help 
God's helper. So he was literally calling on God's help. God help in this dead situation. You know, one theologian said that if he had not been specific and called Lazarus by name, the entire graveyard would have got up. What am I saying? That's how powerful the word and the the name of Jesus is. You can call that thing by name. You don't have to be ashamed. Everyone in here is dealing with someone, something that they are ashamed of or regret. From the pulpit to the door to ceiling to the floor, every single person in here has sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is not a spectator sport where we come here and say, well, I'm more saved or more righteous than the other person. This is the place we come to to confess, to cast our cares, to leave it at the altar, to ask for help in intercessory prayer. So be specific and name that thing you're struggling with. He commanded it. And lastly, the text tells us that he took action. Lose him. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of being beat up by the enemy. I'm tired of losing this faith journey. Loose me. You know what he told Peter. Whatever you loose on earth. You mean to tell me. <laughs> Sister Francis. That all I have to do is speak. And whatever I speak to that thing. And tell it to let me go. That the angels in heaven have already touched and agreed with me. That God has already dispersed his heavenly host. With their swords of flame. Ready to do battle against every wicked scheme. Every foul plan. Every evil spirit. Loose that thing that's in your life. That is causing you harm. Loose it and it will be loosed in heaven. Let go of everything that is stopping you. From being the child of God that has been called upon you loose it let it go let it go some things happened to us in 2020 that's left an indelible mark in our minds and in our bodies and in our spirits but you gotta let some of that go cause 2021 doesn't deserve all that it doesn't deserve the chip that we've gained on our shoulder going through all this mess that the previous 365 days have brought us. We ought to move into the future and into our destiny with a clean slate. Forgetting those things that are behind us and press into our future and press into our deliverance and press into our purpose. Hmm. I'm done. But I like verse 35. The shortest verse in all the scriptures. Jesus wept. Uh, let, me, let me make it live for you. Jesus cried. Jesus boohooed his eyes out. You got to ask yourself, beloved. If Jesus knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. If he had confidence in the power that he could raise Lazarus from the dead, then what would cause the Son of Man to cry? I propose to you this morning that when you have relationship, your suffering becomes God's suffering. He looked out on the crowd, saw the grief, the heaviness, and he was moved with compassion. He didn't cry because he knew the outcome, or because he had doubt in his God's ability or in his own. He cried because you are hurting, baby. Aren't you glad we serve a God? Who knows our pain. Aren't you glad that we don't serve a God made out of precious metal and wood? A God that doesn't know what it is like to be in this wretched human body. Aren't you glad you know a God who knows what it's like to soak your pillow 
with tears. He cried, which is probably out of this whole text, the most powerful expression of God's love for you. Won't you let Jesus into that intimate part of your life and let him clean that dead thing up? The ancient morticians would stuff the body with, they wrapped the body in all kinds of fragrant oils and spices to mask the decomposition, not to stop it. To mask it. And then they'd put a stone. To protect the remains from. God knows what. But today if you are done. Masking what you're going through. Today if you're ready to move into a deeper. More intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. I invite you wherever you're at. To let Jesus into your tomb. For he already knows and he cares for you. Doesn't matter where you are on this Christian journey. If you don't have a relationship with him, let him in. If you had a relationship with him but you kind of fell off, let him in. If you just need a cleaning, a good deep soaking and cleaning and sanitizing of your spirit let Jesus in invite him in right now beloved God I'm tired of covering up the stench I'm tired of faking it till I make it I'm tired of the platitudes they carried me this far but God where you trying to take me Oils and spices and fragrance is not good enough. I really want to be cleaned, transformed, made new. If that's you today, I invite you to give God total access. From your head, the crown of your head to the soles of your feet and everything in between. For he already knows The numbers of hair upon your head. He knows every cell that makes up your body and can call them individually by name. Surely he knows what you're struggling with. Won't you let him in? My second appeal to you is to become bold in your faith. This is a season where you can call that thing by its name. I ain't going to profit a lot to you, but you know what I'm talking about. Whatever it is, call it by its name. Give it to God. You have the power of life and death in your tongue. You can call it Lazarus. Depression. You remember when Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, his disciples were struggling, casting out a spirit out of a little boy. What they didn't understand And all of them, I'm sure they had a minister's book. I'm sure they had, you know, pre-written prayers and things like that. But what they didn't understand, why they couldn't cast it out? Because they didn't know its name. If you're done struggling, call it by its name and let God clean it up. I want to pray with you all. But before I pray, I invite you all of you all that are listening out there to connect with this house of worship to be covered in prayer and in fellowship in word and in worship if that's you connect with us online 
reach out to one of the members. Because in this season of pandemic and prejudice and oppression, and you don't have to be alone. We'll join with you. We'll covenant with you in Christian fellowship. Let's pray. God, I thank you right now for giving us the courage to invite you into our most sacred places, Lord. For God, you know what we're struggling with. God, you know the embarrassment and the shame that could come. But we thank you, you do not shame us, Lord. For therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Mm. God, we thank you that death does not have the final say. That you have taken the sting away, Lord. So no matter how far we think we've fallen behind or fallen on the wayside, God, you will leave 99 to go get one. So we thank you right now for the supernatural divine recon mission to go and get us out of those dead stuck places. When the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do. When the lawyer said, I can't defend you. God, when the finance person said, I can't help you. Lord, you're there. Even if all of humanity gives up on us, God, your greatest promise is Emmanuel. You are there. So, God, we invite you behind the stone. Heal, redeem, empower, protect, prosper, save. In Jesus' name. This time we're going to invite Sister Faye Spence to bring our announcements. Guard your hearts and your minds as she comes forth now. Greetings, Basil Creek family and friends. Today's announcements are as follows. Mark your calendars. A church-wide check-in is being planned for Saturday, November 7, 2020 at 12 o'clock noon. This will be a Zoom meeting and phone lines will be provided. More details to follow. Please join us in worship. Prayer, praise, and testimony services Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. daily and Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 7 p.m. These are conference calls only. Every Saturday at 5 p.m., we will host a teleconference that, all, that allows everyone to participate by sharing a song, a word of encouragement, prayer request, or testimony. Everyone is welcome to join us in this awesome way in serving the Lord. Bible study, Wednesday at 7 p.m., Facebook, and conference call. Let's get moving with Tamara Izzard every Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. via Facebook. Worship with us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Facebook and conference call. Worship services will be live streamed from our sanctuary for the foreseeable future. We welcome all family, visitors, and friends to join us. Worship experiences can be shared in more ways than one via Facebook, teleconference. We have several teleconference lines available for those who are joining us by phone. Please refer to your call-in numbers. Let's stay connected. 
prayer, lifting our church and pastoral search up to God. We are currently in the process of searching for a new pastor. Please remain prayerful, committed, and patient during this process. Pray, pray together. Join us in noonday prayer to intercede on behalf of our communities, our leaders, and our families. Community involvement. We encourage all to continue participating in worship and community involvement. The outreach ministry is asking that on first Sunday, when you bring your tithes and offerings, to please bring a food donation. We will continue to have our food market every first Saturday of the month. In addition, we are accepting school supplies through October. Supplies can be dropped off on Sundays between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Fall Festival Parade, Saturday, October 31st, from 12 to 1, Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Please stay in your vehicles. Masks are required. Middle school age kids and younger. Balloon animals, candy, games, and more. Your vote matters. Early voting has begun. This election is critical for our community, so please make plans and cast your ballot. Church elections, it's time to elect ministry officers. Please schedule your Zoom meeting with the church secretary as soon as possible. Financial reports. The financial reports for third quarter are available for pickup on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Please see Sister Faye Garrett. Giving and donations. Your giving and prayers are needed during this time of our transition and, in mo and is most important. Giving can be done through mail, through PayPal, and you may drop it off on Sundays between 10 and 12 in the rear of our church near the new entrance. To ensure your safety, please remain in your vehicle. This concludes our morning announcements. Thank you and be safe. Thank you, Sister Spence. Please make sure that you uh, govern yourselves accordingly as you heard the announcements. It's time for us to go down from this worship experience. Let me remind you that there is no situation or struggle that you've gone through in your life that's too hard for God to turn it around. For the Lord your God is with you and can redeem and restore. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this worshipful experience. I pray for those who are gathered today, God, and I pray for those who have joined us on the many platforms provided, God. I pray that you are able to gain access to every heart, to every mind, every home, that you're welcomed in to do a new thing, God, to heal and transform and redeem. Now as we go down from this experience, remind us to go out into the mission field and share the message of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Not only through words, but through our works and ways, God. For the Great Commission tells us to go ye therefore into the highways and byways in our prospective places. Keep us safe until we gather again. And may the Lord bless and keep each and every one of us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace.